and welcome to Round Robin. I'm your host, Robin McCormick, with the City of Hampton's Communications and Marketing Department. And today we're going to tackle a difficult issue, which is race relations and what can happen with a, when a city department is out of step culturally and doesn't understand its community, and when the community doesn't understand or relate to that city department or that issue. And, and as a jumping off point, we're going to use the, the issues that's going on in Ferguson, Missouri, or that recently happened, to talk about could this happen in Hampton? What do we do to prevent such, um, uh, such an incident or a misunderstanding after the incident and escalation? So my guests are Pat Uribus, Uribus and he's a citizen volunteer um, with the uh, Citizens Engagement Advisory Commission and has been with the Unity Commission for quite a while, and Michelle Woods-Jones, who's the staff member who directs the work of both of those two citizen committees. So I stumbled over the explanation. I'm not as good about this as you are, but you know, one of the things that occurs to me when we do the citizen budget discussions every year is that there's a little less support for funding the Unity Commission than there is for some of the other citizen departments. And I think it's because when it's working, people don't see the need for it because the, the kinds of crises that you, know, you would help to sift through aren't happening. Yes, <laughs> precisely. And you know, uh, <clears throat> many people uh, are, may not be aware of the fact that the Citizen Unity Commission was born out of a major conflict that was happening in the city uh, that was race related. And a group of citizens, cross section, a fairly substantial number of citizens who represented different neighborhoods, et cetera, came together to talk about what did they believe this city needed to assure that when we had conflicts, we were best uh, in shape to resolve them. And so for all intents and purposes, the mission of the entire Citizens Unity Commission is to foster understanding and respect across the cultural differences within our uh, population. So um, you're right, people don't recognize that the power of building relationships is the bedrock, if you will, of making sure that when you have a problem in your community, that you have people across your community who can talk to one another and who can struggle to resolve it as opposed to them versus us. Mm -hmm. And it, you know, it, you think of it as the police, because I think that is where um, tension can frequently develop, but it could be other city issues. It could be a zoning sure. issue. I remember when Newport News was putting in the um, above ground coal storage facilities mm -hmm. and people in that East End felt like they were being exposed to a hazard. So it was really, you know, a development and zoning issue. It can be any kind of conflict or misunderstanding. Exactly, and that's why uh, originally we had a Citizens Unity Commission and an ad hoc leadership group. Mm -hmm. Well, the ad hoc leadership group has evolved into the um, Citizens Engagement uh, Advisory Commission for that very reason, because you, you don't want to just think that you're reacting exactly. uh, to one area of problems. You want to assure that you've got people who other people trust, who are going to gather the data, uh, who are going to dialogue and deliberate and come up with the best recommendations for how a situation can be handled and make those recommendations to the city council as well as to citizens at large. And I think too, the group of people who were brought in to the original ad hoc group to the, what is now um, the Citizens Engagement Advisory Commission were really, um, independent people. They were not yeah. um, the yes people for city council. They were actually picked because they have distinct voices and communities who listen to those voices. Pat, what brought you in? Um, at the time that they uh, expanded the membership for the ad hoc leadership group, uh, I was sitting on the board of the Downtown Hampton Development Partnership. And I know the city reached out to many of the uh, civic committees and organizations and asked for representatives um, to represent those committees on this commission. And I think it too is, and I, I know, and this may be one of the differences between Ferguson, Missouri and Hampton, but you look, this particular group, you look for a mix of people, people's backgrounds. You look for race, you look for gender, you look for age, you look for, you know, all kinds of things so that we are, 
more representative of the community. Is that fair to say? I think that's right on target. Um, one of the things that makes me very proud of Hampton is that it, it understands the importance of civic engagement, but it understands the importance of civic engagement in terms of diversity and making sure that the various communities and the people who live in those communities have an opportunity to have their say so that the end product that you come up with is really representative of the entire community. So how, I mean, all this is like, you know, nice happy talk, diversity, nice happy talk, we all appreciate each other. What concrete things has your committees or commissions done in terms of making recommendations or working on training or things like that that help change perceptions? One of the things I'm going to ask Pat to elaborate on, because he played a major role in the uh, design of this and the presentation of it, is that uh, this uh, uh, commission wrote a uh, comprehensive report uh, to the city council precisely about the relationships between our police department and our citizens. And uh, uh, there were a host of recommendations that I think will answer that question. Okay, Pat, you're on the hot seat. <laughs> uh, there were a couple of uh, incidences in the community around 2011 or so that uh, really gained a lot of attention. Um, a, lot of the, a lot of the people, the citizens of the community, wanted some answers, uh, wanted to know what procedures um, were taking place. Uh, we were asked by uh, the city council and the city manager to um, take a little study and do a review as to what the possibility of rec what recommendations we could make to the city to help facilitate and answer some of these questions the community had. We did, a, like Michelle says, we did a very comprehensive report and had determined at the time that uh, we felt that there was a trust issue. Um, there were some conflicts between, um, at the time, some of the police division policies or, or behaviors and uh, with the community that were in conflict. Um, in our report, we kind of, really the gist of it, what we said was it was a, a trust and a communication situation that really we really had to work on. Um, so our recommendations basically were that we wanted to have some sort of review of, of some of incidences, that incidences that happened in the community. And uh, we also wanted some uh, additional training um, to be taking place for uh, how the police division deals with the community. And we asked for a, a detailed uh, action plan to come out of the police division on, on how to get the community back engaged with each other and communicate. Now that is, I, I don't know if it's from your recommendation or if it was also happen, happening simultaneously within the police department, but when Chief Salt came in and when we're interviewing candidates, that community policing, that interaction with citizens and business owners was a huge focus of certainly what he has been talking about since he's been here. Absolutely. And uh, I don't know which came uh, first, <laughs> but I, I do know that the new chief uh, understood uh, when his feet hit the ground that uh, establishing trust between the community and the police department was crucial. And the steps that have been taken that I'm aware of thus far have been uh, designated uh, to provide opportunities for the police and the citizens to develop relationships. Um, uh, various officers are assigned to neighborhoods so that the people within those neighborhoods know their names, know who they are, and vice versa, are familiar with the kinds of concerns that they have and the kinds of issues. And um, uh, all of this is uh, preventative, uh, it provides an opportunity not just to prevent problems, but for the police to be perceived as um, active, uh, crucial, important uh, parts of the, of the community. And that their goal is uh, not confrontation, but preventing crime and helping to assure the safety of the citizens, the way they talk to people, uh, the way in which they uh, uh, educate them on what to expect uh, uh, when, when they interact with them, et cetera. All these things build trust and build community. And that's important. And one of the things, and I heard a comedian say this, that you know, before an incident or when, when a community is interviewed after an incident, they'll all say, oh, well, I didn't think that could happen here. We're the most, you know, peaceful, happy, get along place. 
and it can happen anywhere. There can Absolutely. be a misunderstanding that blows up. So, so part of your job is to prevent that, but the other part is to promote conversation and, and action afterward to help defuse. Is Absolutely. And you know, um, sometimes we don't think about uh, the, the importance of just communicating. Uh, and uh, by and large, we operate in silos. We go to the same churches that our friends go to. We sort of stay in our neighborhoods, et cetera. And if we aren't able, and if we don't have positive ways to be able to move out of our comfort zone and establish relationships with other people, when you have a conflict, you don't have a net. You don't have a safety net. You don't have a means, and mm -hmm. also you don't have the tools, which is why we have our diversity college, because it's not just about uh, having coffee together, although that's important, watching movies and discussing them together, although that's important. You also need tools. Um, it's not natural to just know how to interact with people that you have no background and understanding of. Uh, there are ways in which you can facilitate that and ways in which you can uh, establish relationships relatively quickly that have under them, undergirded by um, good communication and good trust. It just, it, it, you know, when, when something like this happens nationally and, and the Pew Research Foundation did a poll and they do periodic polls, and what those polls continue to show is that, for the most part, people who look like me think that there's no racism or very little, no prejudice, everybody's happy. And people who look a little more like you still see major hurdles to overcome. And so when something like this happens, people react from their own perspective. And, and African Americans might say, I've been followed in a store by people who think I'm shoplifting. I've been pulled over for no reason. I have less trust. And people like me might say, I think the police are doing a good job because you know I don't have those experiences and I see the police as you know an important resource helping to keep the peace. And and so when you start out with a gap that big and it's it's huge, it's yes, like yes. you know sixty percent distrust and, and views of racism from African Americans and like thirty from white people. I mean it is a big gap and. And overcoming that and understanding the other perspective is a huge task. How are you going to do that, Michelle? Ah, with a big old <laughs> magic wand. Pat, how are you going to do it? You, know, I, I was, you come from a different <laughs> right. cultural perspective than either black or white right, at this right. point. Um, but. Yeah, and, and everything kind of depends where, where you're from. I mean, communities all across the country have the same issues. And like you said earlier, all are vulnerable mm -hmm. to things that are going on, like, say, in Ferguson. Uh, we ourselves have had incidences that have sparked some, some hot topics. Right. Um, it's interesting, though, too, when you say that the polls are taken to see just the wide ranging answers that come just based on well, the demographics, mm -hmm. you know, what questions being asked and what perspective it's being answered in. And I think going back to the SEAC, which is the, the commission, um, we have a very diverse group and experiences, uh, cultural, ethnic, eth ethnically. Um, and our discussions are represent all of those viewpoints and really gets a lot of conversation stirred up. So, but it's a good eye, it's a good bird's eye view from the community, all aspects of the community. And hopefully we'll continue that and uh, make more strides to keep the peace, if you will, and um, involve the community and the police division and any other city other division, city any department. other city division Absolutely. too now. Or it we, could be a neighborhood growing. against a neighbor. It exactly. could be citizens yes. against citizens yeah. who have developed an issue. It's important, it's important to note that yes, it's, it's not just the police division. We have, I mean, we're here to advocate for uh, the citizens on, on all fronts for the city. And that's important. And you all are pretty much handpicked by city council and have city council's ear in a way that the average citizen, you know, might not, um, and and to react for the citizens and to, to be that voice, which yes. I think is extremely important yes. to have. And the other thing that is important about this group is that they are recommended also by citizens. Yes, and they the are nominated by citizens. And the question that the citizens are asked is, who would you trust? Right. Because that's uh, because very important. Because you need a voice that isn't the city's voice, but is the citizen's voice. Yes. But you need to be able to have that conversation 
in a way that isn't coming in out of anger, where there's an understanding and a trust that exists as a basis. Right. right. And, the, and that the platform uh, that, that people can find common ground on is wanting to have a community that is safe, mm -hmm. uh, where people feel included and empowered to be participants, uh, and where they feel that they are treated uh, fairly. And so that's, that's very important. The other thing that uh, uh, Pat mentioned, we are all the sum total of all of our experiences. Everything that has happened to us, the stories that our families uh, have shared with us about their experiences, et cetera. And what we often fail to understand is that we all have very different experiences. And they are based on diversity, not just race, but class, uh, economics. I don't think we talk enough about gender in this country. That's right. <laughs> I think that's a big that's one. That's right. And for the first Age time is huge in too, the history, about... we've got generational diversity. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, we have uh, diversity in terms of our body types and sizes and uh, uh, the views about how we uh, look. And we have uh, uh, misperceptions based upon things that we've read about large categories of people, right. much of which we have to unlearn. You've heard people say, you're not like the others, <laughs> right? So you say, how many of the others do you know? I know, I know. <laughs> We're not just what we look like, no, you know? There's no. a whole lot of difference there. A lot of texture and a lot of uh, um, richness in those differences. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, one thing, too, we'd like to work on from uh, the commission's aspect, too, is letting the community know that we're there, um, that they can come out and see us without the uh, you know, fear of retaliation or anything. We're kind of an advocate for everybody. Good, and a good first so. place to start. Yeah, if you yeah. don't trust the city, maybe you trust the Citizen Commission and, yes. and can speak to them. And sure. you guys are on the website. It's under the CUC. It's under the Citizens Unity Commission yes, as an offshoot on the web page. So I do encourage people to go look for that. Well, thank you. This is actually a topic that I think we could discuss for an hour Absolutely. <laughs> or more, but we're going <laughs> to cut it short and make people, um, you know, come to Diversity College to learn more. Yes, we have room for all. Okay. Well, thank <laughs> you. Thank, thank you, you for tackling this tough yeah. issue. Thank and you. thank you for listening. I know it is hard sometimes to deal with issues that are unpleasant and to think about what it means here and how you can get involved or can understand better or be part of helping um, make a better solution and a better Hampton. Thank you for watching. Thank you.